Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Vieran and today we're going to be talking about the map. Uh, what's on the map and all the things down the side of the map. And we're also going to be t discussing what the daily things you need to do on ESO are. <clears throat> so first of all, the map. This is pretty self-explanatory, but if you hold square, the bottom it says hold square, open zone guide. So if we do that, we have all these here. Now what this will tell you is it will tell you the ones save you want to know which way shrines you've got it will be checked so you know which way shrines you've got and then the way shrine that's greyed out is the one you haven't got it so all these I mean for me aren't really a big deal the only thing for me that's worth doing is the sky shards but as you can see it tells me which sky shards I have gotten and which sky shards I haven't so we'll go over all of them real quick I've got 5 out of 24 on the main storyline 9 out of 10 on the way shrines uh, 0 out of 6 on the delves again I'm not worried about them uh, Stormhaven points of interest I've got 1 out of 22 it's just a point of interest yeah it'll give you a bit of XP but that's about it Stormhaven Pathfinder I believe if you complete them all, you actually get a title, like, I don't know what you get. Stormhaven Adventurer, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, Pathfinder, we've got 2 out of 7. We've got Stations, which is 0 out of 3. We've got the Mundestones, which is 2 out of 3. Public Dungeons, 0 out of 1. World Event, 0 out of 3. <coughs> World Bosses, 1 out of 6. Sky Shards, which is the big one because this is where you'll get skill points. That's 3 out of 16. And then we've got Law Books slash Library Books, which is 10 out of 33. And that's what will rank up your Mages Guild skill line. So, let's say if I wanted to go do Northern Owlsware storyline. What I can do is I can go to Northern Owlsware. I don't have to go there, I just have to find it. So, if we go here... And then we hold square to open the zone guide, and then we click square, as you can see at the bottom there, it says square, start, story, uh, start zone story, and there you go. That's where it is. So now, I can see the quest for the zone story, which I couldn't see before. So, all we've got to do is travel to there, which is... right there so you can just get someone to taxi you to this way shrine to the riverhold way shrine or you can travel there yourself but if you haven't got any of the way shrines it can be a really long travel so i'd suggest asking someone first so that's essentially the map explained also you if you want to go sky shard hunting or you want to go law book hunting to rank stuff up or whatever you can go online and you can look for all the locations but now we're going to what daily things you need to do you need to make sure you're doing these every day because this is what's going to give you the most xp it's going to help you out it's going to help your ranks it's going to help your um skill lines everything so we got an activity finder dungeon finder random dungeon there you go you're going to want to do at least one random dungeon a day at least once you do it once you do not get this xp you get 33,000 if you're at CP. Obviously, it's lower if you're a lower rank, but definitely make sure you are doing at least one daily dungeon a day. And also, I know a lot of people are going to hate this, but Battlegrounds, you want to make sure you are doing at least one Battlegrounds, but you cannot come in third place. There are three teams. You have to come first or second in order to get this XP. You cannot, be, you cannot come third, it will not count, and then you'll have to go back in again. This is PvP, which is why a lot of people do not do it. I go in there, because I want the XP, and I needed uh, the skill lines. So if we look at the skill lines that uh, PvP gives you. Here we go. So these are the skill lines. I've got that just for the major gallop at all times. That's why it gives you 30% 30, uh, 30 for the mount speed. Uh, I've got Echoing Vega. You can have the Warhorn for any of you healers out there. 
you, the, there is still some really good powers in here that you may need. Whatever class you're playing, you may actually need them. So make sure you do your research on your builds and make sure if you need PvP powers for whatever reason, make sure you are getting them and you can get them just by doing that daily battlegrounds. Next is, okay, so over here at the tent, this is called Undaunted. To start the Undaunted, you will need, after you finish your tutorial, you'll spawn in one of your major starting cities. Once you're in that starting city, make, you can go on Google and you can find out which city it is for which alliance that you're in. But you want to go into the tavern. When you're into the tavern, there's going to be a group of people sitting around the table. Talk to them. They are the Undaunted. They'll give you a quest. Go complete the quest. Go talk to them again. And they will give you the skill line. They'll tell you to come over here and pledge yourself to the Undaunted. Now, once you pledge yourself to the Undaunted, uh, you're going to get pledges. Bear in mind, you cannot do these pledges until you are rank uh, 45. However, you will unlock the Undaunted skill line before that. And how you rank up the skill line is you do the dungeons. You just do, when you go into a random dungeon, actually accept the quest that's in that random dungeon. You'll get a quest if you've never done that dungeon before. So accept the quest. And once you've completed the quest and completed the dungeon, it will rank up your Undaunted skill line. Now, as a tank, I use the altar and I use the inner rage and I use the bone surge. But the passives are also really good for any uh, class that you are. So it increases your max health, stamina, and magicka by 2% per type of armor. So I've got one medium, one heavy, and one light. Now I've got most heavy, one medium, and one light. Medium and light is for the monster set. And then we've got activating a synergy. Restores 4% health, stamina, and magicka. This is really important to help your sustain. Which is why untaunted passives are some of the better ones. But definitely... Uh, make sure you do the undaunted, make sure you unlock the skill line, and as you're going through and doing your daily dungeons, the skill line wing will rank up on its own. When you hit 45, you are going to come back to this tent, and you're going to talk to these guys here. So if I want to accept my pledges, City of, I was going to City of Ash. So City of Ash 2 is one of them, that's an easy one. Uh, what have we got there? I didn't know what that said. Banish shells, if it says kill them more of Inferno. I'm guessing that's banish shells. We can have a look in a second. Yes, that's banish shells. And then we've got unhallowed grave. You can get extra XP and extra keys. Because you get the undaunted keys. What the undaunted keys are, we open the store. And this is where you get all your monster sets from. For anyone who doesn't know what a monster set is, it's, a, it's essentially your helmet and your shoulders. So if we look here, my helmet, as you can see if we scroll down, it says part of the Engine Guardian set, two of two items. And then we've got the shoulder there, two of two items. And that's what the monster set is. So when you are farming gear, you don't actually need, um, say if you're farming gear like, Crimson Oath, for example, you will not need a head and a shoulder because that's what your monster set is. It's your head and your shoulder. So make sure you remember, guys, <clears throat> to pick up your monster set when you reach the uh, right level at level 50 CP 160. Pick up your monster set. And make sure you do these pledges because they're going to help to rank up your skill line as well. They're going to help to rank up your character and they're going to give you a, a lot of dungeon experience just don't go into vet if you don't think you're ready because the vets can be pretty tough but yeah guys that's basically it for this beginner's guide in terms of what you need to do every day in order to make the most out of ESO and also how to read the map and how to start your main story quests if this helped you out please leave a big thumbs up on the video and you want to find your way back to the channel I appreciate all the support of everyone Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.